you're wanting to write an offer on a home that you absolutely love, but it's a competitive market, there's a good chance there's another offer in on that same property. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the tips and tricks on how to strengthen your offer and make it more appealing and desirable to the sellers. The key to writing a competitive offer is understanding the seller situation. A good offer from a buyer and a buyer's agent will cater to the needs of the seller's situation. What do I mean by that? Every seller has different motivations of why they're selling a home. Maybe they can't afford their mortgage anymore. Maybe they're downsizing, they're upgrading. Maybe they have to relocate because of work. Maybe because they want to relocate because they want to go to a tropical climate. I'm filming this from Pennsylvania, so I, I've had clients like that, okay? Or they wanna be closer to family. There's a lot of different reasons why a seller wants to sell, but each motivation will affect what they want to see in an offer. So understanding that, and that's what your buyer's agent responsibility is, is to understand that information and be able to guide you on how to write your offer to make it appealing to the sellers involved. One of the key things to understand is most likely you're gonna have some form of contingencies within your offer. Now a contingency is basically a protected manner in which a buyer can back out of the deal because of an appraisal, mortgage contingency, inspections, you name it, there are protected reasons. The more protections is better for the buyer, but worse off for the seller. You wanna to try to get it, especially in a competitive market, you wanna make it so the seller feels favorable towards your offer. That's why you may hear of people just waiving inspections and whatnot. I don't recommend waiving inspections because there's so much that could happen in a home and just having that extra protection on one of your biggest financial decisions is something that I'm not going to waive. Now, if you want to waive it, I will write the offer how you would like. Even with contingencies, there are ways to go about it to make your offer seem more appealing even though you have these contingencies at play. Both your mortgage contingency and your inspections have specific due dates that you write in either a specific date or X amount of days after a signed agreement that's all stated in the agreement of sale. So a good buyer's agent and you understanding from this video, if you can shorten that time frame, talking with your mortgage company, talking with your inspectors, how short can you get that so that way you're protected but you're not making it even further along for the sellers. Because let's look at it from a seller's perspective. A seller wants a clean offer, right? And they want a clean offer because when they're listing their home, they wanna sell it. For sellers who want to sell their property fast, they don't wanna take their home off the market and then have to put it back on the market because something fell through with inspections or mortgage contingency or something along those lines. Shorten that time frame to show that you're serious and then you can get those steps done. If it does fall through, it's not as much time off the market. In about 2021 and late 2020, you were starting to see people waiving appraisal gaps. And basically what that means is in the agreement of sale, there's protections for if the appraisal price that comes from the appraisal report is less than the purchase price, then there are negotiations on how to go about it another contingency, right? However, people were either waiving this appraisal gap or they were given a certain amount of funds for a waiver of the appraisal gap. Let's give an example. House is $350,000 that you're under contract for. The appraisal comes in at 340. A buyer may have wrote, oh, we will cover the first $10,000 of an appraisal gap, no questions asked. And if that's the case, that $10,000 is not covered by the lender. That's $10,000 out of the buyer's pocket. That's still happening in certain markets where you can have a document constructed stating that you'll cover X amount of dollars if there is this appraisal gap difference. Let's just say it was three fifty, dollars but it came in at three thirty-five. dollars So there's a $15,000 gap. That $5,000 difference will be negotiated to what it normally states in the agreement of sale. This is a little bit riskier, but if you're comfortable and have the funds to do so, this does show that you're willing to work through any differences that come up. Now, there is another way that you can do that kind of with inspections. Uh, you can have an agreement, let's just say, between the two parties that if there isn't any major issues that come up, you know, things that need replacing that are over $5,000, certain 
legalities aren't fond of that, so I'm not gonna go into great detail about that, but that's another option as well. Another effective option that works for everybody is paying for the full transfer taxes. Now, for a majority of Pennsylvania, it's a 2% transfer tax divided evenly between the buyer and seller, so each party gets 1%. You can write in, there's a specific section of the agreement of sale where you can say the buyer is responsible for the full transfer tax. Now, this just means that your closing cost is 1% more of whatever the purchase price is. If it's $350,000, then $3,500 is gonna be added onto your closing costs, but it makes your offer seem more appealing. Another strategy, which is quite interesting to me, is having a very large earnest money deposit. Now, this is interesting to me in the fact that it doesn't directly benefit the seller in any way. When you're putting a large earned money deposit down, you're basically saying that you're really bought into buying this home. You don't want to back out of the deal and you have the funds to do so. But if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll understand that earnest money deposit goes with you to settlement as long as settlement occurs. And if you have a protected reason, then you can get that money back. That earnest money, so if you need $50,000 to close on a house and you decide we're going to put in $30,000 as your earnest money deposit, that doesn't change how much you pay at settlement. It'll still be a combined $50,000, but you only need to bring like $20,000 to the settlement table where if you did like a $10,000 earnest money deposit, then you need to bring 40. But it's still the same amount that you're buying and the sellers aren't gaining extra money. This is a really cool tip. If you're really bought into the house and really wanna buy it, have the funds to do so, and it doesn't cost you any more money. As I mentioned before, knowing the seller's situation is very important to writing an offer because a lot of times they will have a specific settlement date in mind. Now, not everyone will. If they're selling and they already have their place, they usually wanna sell the sooner the better. Why? Because they don't wanna own two homes, so they wanna sell fast. However, if they're in the process of buying another home or their home is being built and they need to wait for a longer settlement, you could do a longer settlement and you can also do something called a rent back situation where basically you settle on the house but the sellers don't move out of the home until that rent back date that you have stated and you can have them either pay you a dollar amount each day for the difference between settlement and when they move out or you can just say, hey, it's for free. If you're a buyer and you're able to understand the seller situation when they're trying to sell their home and can craft your offer accordingly, there is a higher chance that you're going to win the home. Just because you do everything that I stated in this video doesn't mean you're going to win on your offer because there's a hierarchy. If you have the highest purchase price, you have a good chance of winning. If you have the best financing type, your odds of winning the offer are going up. There's a lot of different factors that come into play. If you incorporate these things, it's going to strengthen your offer, no doubt about it. If you haven't done so already, press the like and subscribe. I appreciate you. Have a good day.